In this tutorial, I'm going to explain you how to use the Flutter package Flutter Speed Dial. This is the simple app we're going to build today, where we have the speed dial here. And when we press on it, we get multiple options here with different icons and labels. And when we, for example, press on one of these buttons here, it will, in this case, show us a snack bar, as you can see here, and it will automatically close the speed dial. Let's get started. As mentioned, we're going to use the Flutter package Flutter Speed Dial. Just press on here to copy it to your clipboard. Then in your pubspec.yaml file, underneath your dependencies, just paste it in here and run pubget. That's all we need to do for the setup. Now concerning our layout, I simply build a very simple Flutter app where we have a scaffold. The scaffold has an app bar, then a body, and then this scaffold also has a parameter called floating action button. And here we can use the speed dial widget. For this, of course, first import it into your Flutter file. Then another thing I'm going to mention is that I defined some variables up here. The most important one is the is dial open. This is basically a boolean with whether we can check if the dial is open or not. Also, this boolean here determines whether we should show an icon or not within our speed dial. So if this is set to true, so remove icons equals true, then we would only see the labels here instead of the buttons. But I'm going to show you this just in a bit. So within our scaffold, we can define a, another parameter where the floating action button should be located. In this case, it's end docked. So it's here. There are a lot of different positions where you could put this. If you were to put this into the center docked, then as you can see here, it's centered here. So if you prefer to have it in a different location, just play around a bit with this here. Then within our speed dial widget, there are a lot of things we can customize here. First, the most important ones is the icon here. So this is this icon. And when it's open, so in this case, it's called active, we can see the X icon here. Then the spacing refers to how much spacing should be in between here. So if we increase this, you can see the spacing changing here. Then as mentioned here, here we use our boolean, in this case it's a value notifier, which we have to use for the speed dial. And we can use this boolean then to check whether the dial is open or not within your code. Then here you can define the spacing between children. You can give this button a size. In this case, I gave it a circular size of 35. If you want to make this bigger, then just increase it to, for example, 55, then it will be a bit bigger here. Here you can define whether it should be visible or not. Then the direction, when you press on this, it will go up, but you can also define it to the left or when your speed dial is on the left, for example, then you can define the direction to be to the right. Then here's this render overlay. As you can see here, when the speed dial is open, you will see that the background here is a bit white with some opacity, so you can still see something, but you see a difference when this is open and when this is closed. And you can click wherever you want to close it. So if I click here, it will close automatically. But you can set this to true, for example, here. This close manually so that the user has to press here to close it or press a button here. Then you can also give here a custom animation duration. So as we've seen this multiple times now before, it was a bit slow, but now I decrease the animation duration. So as you can see here, now it popped up quicker. Then our children here, you can just define basically one child if you only want one widget. Otherwise you go for the children here and one children is a speed dial child widget. And as mentioned here, we are here using the Boolean RM icons, which stands for remove icons. So this is set to false and then false by negating it. So it's true. So it's going to show us the icon. Otherwise, it's not going to show the icon. So if we were to set the RM icons to true, then as you can see here, when we press on it, it is only going to show us the labels here, no longer the icons. Then, of course, for the child, you can, of course, define the icon you want to use. So in this case, for example, it's the accessibility icon as you can see here then you can define the background color foreground color is the color of the icon on tap is what should happen when you press on this and on long press so when you hold longer on, on this button basically then you can also define a custom function here and you can also define a label here so as you can see here the difference i commented the first label here so as you can see here there's no label but here and here there's a label so you can also define this I hope you liked this tutorial. Please leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them down below in the comments. And thank you for watching.